Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So polycarbonate is pretty difficult to print. I've been building a heated enclosure for it to make it a bit more printable, but that's not the only issue with it. So in this video I'm going to share you my tips and tricks for this material and I will also provide you with my slicer settings. So why do we even want to print in polycarbonate? Well, one of the main reasons is it is very temperature resistant. It can withstand up to 100 degrees very easily and depending on which blend of polycarbonate you get exactly, some reports say it can withstand up to 140 degrees Celsius before it starts getting soft. And that's just an extreme amount of temperature. PLA in comparison get soft around 55 degrees Celsius and ABS can go up to like 80 degrees Celsius. Now this characteristic is really good on the one hand, on the other hand it creates a lot of problems while printing. Because for one you have to print at a very hot temperature of course because the melting point is a lot higher but it also creates a lot of warping. If you think warping is bad with ABS, you haven't seen polycarbonate. And to make matters worse, it sticks to practically nothing. PEI, it's just gonna rub over it. I tried printing on a better PEI sheet, even heated up to 120 degrees Celsius, the maximum that the Prusa can go stock, and even though it was pushing the material onto the build plate, it didn't stick in the slightest. The only thing it sticks very well to is itself. And before I was gonna make a build plate out of polycarbonate as well to print onto, which it probably would fuse to, I decided to try a glue stick, which works okay. It doesn't stick perfectly, but it holds down, and if you make sure that your first layer gets down very close to the build plate, but not too close so it pushes out the side, so just the perfect first layer, and you make sure that the, the nozzle is nice and clean, you can get a good first layer down that's going to allow you to get a successful print. Now the first layer is just the first step of the battle. After that you have to combat warping. And one of the ways that I am doing this is by using an enclosed chamber on the printer. Now I tried printing it with basically the door open on my chamber, not, not like fully open but it was only like 30 degrees Celsius in there where they have the temperature probe and it just wouldn't work at all. I have seen someone claiming online that he printed a Banshee in polycarbonate without any sort of enclosure but I think he was using a much lesser grade of polycarbonate which has a way lower melting point as well. So for me, I'm basically going as high as I can possibly go with my enclosure without melting the printer itself as the Push i3 is using PDG parts, which I don't want to go above like 60, 70 degrees Celsius. But once I get all these parts replaced with polycarbonate parts and I get the electronics out of the box, I'll go up to like almost 100 degrees Celsius. Now while I do think that you need an enclosure to print polycarbonate, it doesn't have to be a fancy one like mine. Just using a big box, even just a cardboard box, will improve your chances dramatically. And building a simple wooden box and adding some insulation will not cost much at all and get you a lot better results. I will also have some other guides down below uh, where you can build some a bit easier enclosures. As it is now, I can get pretty much any print to complete successfully, but depending on the geometry there is still some warping. I'm of course printing with a brim around it on pretty much all the parts, and things like a Benji print no problem at all, as the surface area where it contacts the build plate is quite small, and warping stays at the minimum. But printing parts like this one, with ha which have a way larger, kind of rectangular contact surface with the build plate, are a lot tougher. And I can't seem to get them quite warp free, but the warp is so small that the parts can still be used. I just 
design the parts in a way where I don't need the bottom face to be perfectly flat. Then to get the print itself to look kind of nice and high quality and also work out really well without any layer splitting, I found this really good profile online uh, by the same guy that I claimed to print, print it without an enclosure at all, which I tuned a little bit for my material, but basically what it does is it has a lot of very weird settings in there. For example, the extrusion width of the perimeters is almost twice the nozzle diameter. And you also print quite fast and generally push the material flow to maximum. Now, I don't know why all these settings work how they do, but they do work and they work extremely well. And just trying to achieve the same result with kind of normal settings was basically impossible. So I don't know which physical properties this is exploiting, but it works very well. So I'm gonna have my Cura profile linked down below and I'm also gonna have the article linked below that I based this on. Now the temperature is something you're gonna have to tune for your specific kind of polycarbonate, but I pushed mine to around 290 degrees Celsius, with the bed maxed out at 120 degrees Celsius. In some polycarbonate blends you will have to go to over 300 degrees Celsius on the hot end, which the Prusa doesn't support natively, and also, of course, uh, increasing the bed temperature even a bit more would help with warping as well. But this basically is what I use to print. One other thing that you have to make sure is that your filament stays dry. Polycarbonate is very hydroscopic, meaning that it will just suck up all the moisture around it if you just leave it out in the air. And once it is moist, on the one hand, it will not print as nicely, and on the other hand, the prints that it does create are a lot less strong. So I highly, highly recommend you build a dry box for your filament. That, and I will have a link down below to some good videos explaining how to build one of those. It's very simple and it doesn't cost much at all. So I hope this video was helpful, getting you to print some beautiful polycarbonate prints as well. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Also consider to subscribe so you don't miss the second part of the enclosure builds. I now have all the electronic parts, so I will start working on the Arduino code and get everything built into the enclosure. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and until next time.